Hello and um, welcome to 90 Minutes with Neville Salfo. My name is Keith Mullen. I'm your host this evening, uh, if you can call me a host. Um, and to, tonight we've got um, um, uh, a special guest who's coming to speak to us about uh, fan supporting um, uh, food banks. Uh, his name is Dave Kelly. Uh, also, we have um, Neville Salfo, uh, the, 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 the legend that is, and um, David Feely, uh, who's sometimes known as the Toffee Oracle. I like to call him the Toffee Llama uh, and various other names when we, um, we go, go to the football. So kind of without further ado, I'd like to um, um, sort of direct kind of the first question at, at Dave Kelly, because obviously you're the, one of the reasons here and... I know you and I know the found you founded the um the, the fan support and food bank thing in, in 2015 and it is a collaboration between uh, Liverpool fans and Everton fans and there's kind of a bit of history behind that which I think is a great thing considering the rivalry over the years so for those people that are listening Dave uh, or, or maybe watching this I mean can you give us a little bit of background about yourself and 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 your involvement in this and and how it how it came about and then we can maybe uh, discuss some issues that surround this uh, uh, as we go through it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before we kick on, um, big thanks for inviting us on uh, tonight to talk about our initiative. Because um, I think any publicity is welcome publicity. Uh, I can assure you we don't have a, a media or a comms department or a PR budget, so uh, it's more than welcome. Um, I was sitting here looking at your three kippers and thinking, well, I once, I once, I once met the Holy Trinity. And I'm sitting here tonight with the unholy Trinity. So <laughs> Very, there's our clip, Mullen. Uh, so, so, yeah, uh, I think a lot of people are really surprised when we talk about how fan support and food banks actually started off. Uh, and it was, believe it or not, I, I, I point the finger of blame fairly and squarely at Peter Scudamore, the chief executive of the Premier League. Yeah. And... Uh, at, at, at the time in 2015, us fans were being incredibly awkward and uh, uh, demanding of the Premier League that away ticket prices had, uh, had met uh, a, 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 an unacceptable level whereby fans were kicking back now. Um, I think I'll, I'll never forget sitting in the boardroom at the Premier League. Um, myself and Jay McKenna walked down the stairs into the boardroom um, uh, there was representatives from all the Premier League clubs there. And what used to astonish me is you would get every single fan of every single club in the Premier League would nearly all say the same thing together. Do you, do, have you travelled down together? And they were astonished that we'd go down on the same train, that we actually had relationships with each other. Um, <laughs> so I, I said to them, I said, well, why wouldn't I travel down on a train with Jay McKenna? I work in the same office as him. We might have different employers, but we work out of the same workplace. We've got the same interests, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. um, one of the things they always used to come back and say to us, ah, well, that's all right for scousers. Scousers stick together. Um, <laughs> we, always used to re- we always used to respond with, well, isn't it about time that Cockney's and Brummies and Man started sticking together. And you'd have the ridiculous scenario where the rep from Tottenham would ask us to ask the rep from Arsenal a question because yeah. they didn't really have a relationship yeah. with them. Um, it's the same with City and United and a lot of other clubs. So we, 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 we sat in this meeting and um, uh, Richard Scudamore told us um, that we had a, a, an absolute cheek coming down asking for a price cap on away tickets, that we actually get our football far too cheaply. Um, he, he mentioned the centre court at Wimbledon and Formula One races in Monaco and all the blue chip events all around the world. Um, to the house of laughter there from everyone sitting in the room. Um, he then went on to talk about how charitable the Premier League are magnificent work that the football clubs do in the communities. Now, we didn't actually say this, but he implied that the Premier League does this, the clubs doing that, don't particularly see the fans doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. So we thought, right, 
we'll get up tonight. We'll take you on. We'll challenge you on that. And coming back on the train, we had a had, had a good discussion, and um, I think as ever, I fell asleep by the time we got to Watford's while Jimmy uh, Jamie Kenner was born me out. <laughs> um, but we went down a couple of weeks later, and they were going along the same narrative. However, they realised how serious we were because we'd actually got out and taken certain actions uh, and managed to make a little bit of progress. So they then agreed that um, maybe we were paying too much and they certainly weren't laughing at us by the second uh, meeting because they knew we were serious. Yeah. Coming back that day on the train, I was with Ian Byrne and we had a, had a good discussion uh, about let's do something, let's do something and let's use the unique the sort of scouts are sticking together. We are probably the only two clubs in the only city that could launch a joint initiative and bring rival fans together to do something for the betterment of their own community. And the more we spoke about it, the more realistic it became. Particularly when you look at the Walton constituency is the only constituency to have two Premier League football clubs. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, six out of the eight wards within that constituency finish in the Champions League spots with regards to social deprivation and poverty. The following day, we've gone to a meeting in a community centre in Anfield. Um, we thought we were popular because there was a queue down the street. <laughs> unfortunately, the queue wasn't to come and listen to us. The queue was for the food bank, what was just about to run out of food. And after we'd done the meeting, the chairman of the community association uh, invited us into the stock room. The stock room was bare, and the only thing that was left in it was six small tins of tuna and a bag of pasta. That was on a Friday afternoon, and that, that was probably the light bulb moment. Let's see what we can do uh, to help the food banks in the city. Now, why I thought it was a good idea to ask the city council to drop a couple of wheelie bins outside Goodison for us. Is that what you've done? Yeah. I'm sorry to interject, but some of our listeners won't know exactly what you've done. Yeah, yeah. So that's what you've done. So, uh, 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 October 2015, it was quite a poignant day. Uh, I was actually in St Luke's Church before we started the collection. Um, and it was unfortunately the day our Kendall passed away. Yeah. So we, yeah, yeah. we were all on a downer going out yeah. there to do it. And um, I can remember standing outside the Winslow with the uh, famous wheelie bin. Yeah. Um, by kick-off time, we'd collected loads of chip papers and beer bottles and a small amount of food. I'm <laughs> um, <laughs> quite pleased with ourselves to have been started and Everton duly about, uh, obliged and got rolled over 3 0 by United. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fast forward that on from them, half a dozen, eight bags of food, 233 consecutive games at Anfield and Goodison. Football closed down. Now, you've got to bear in mind, we'd gone from a position whereby we were collecting food in a wheelie bin to on average we were collecting one tonne of food per match at Anfield and Goodison. Now, when you look at the huge significance of all of that, the North Liverpool Food Bank, who are the beneficiaries of everything we get. Yeah. 30% of their donations were coming via football and the plug had been pulled overnight. Yeah. Um, can, I just, can I just ask on that point? When you say a ton, was that in weight a ton? A ton in weight. Oh, my God. So I just need to ask this. I'm sorry, because I'm not really the bright one here, but I'm just saying, so you went from a, a wheelie bin outside the ground in 2015 yeah. to the fact it was this, the majority of it was football, so people walk up to you and drop it in the bin kind of thing? Or were, they, or were they bringing vans to no, the place? We, we, we actually have a van parked up in the van zone about Danfield and Goodison. Yeah. Um, so we've gone from a wheelie van to a small... So it's been van. incremental progress you've gone yeah. forward yeah. from there. So we've okay. gone from a wheelie van to a transit van, from a transit van to a Mercedes Sprinter, Seven and a half ton truck. Fantastic. So that 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 that's how, how, how quickly it developed over time. So we 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 obviously we're going into the unknown. Um, and if you cast your mind back just over two years ago, 
with all the pandemic, we're in a lockdown, we can't go out the door. How long did you think it last? A couple of weeks, a couple of months tops? Yeah. Uh, the sun shining, and I just work from the back garden, that was it, mate, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Little did we know what we were going to face. Um, and, and, and I think a lot of us sat back and enjoyed the fact that, um, well, all the games are on the telly live now, we don't even have to set foot out the house, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then them dirty, stinking broadcasters decided... That they were Star, going, uh, uh, charging us fifteen pounds per pay per view game, and I think that was probably one of my proudest moments um, it was fantastic. In, in, in the seven years that we had. Um, because there's now a national network of fans supporting food banks uh, yeah. with all the clubs play a full and active role in it. We decided that we would start a hashtag boycott pay per view, support your local food bank campaign. Yeah. And the first game that went out on a Friday night, if you cast your mind back, Newcastle, Man it? United, Newcastle. That's right. The Newcastle Food Bank raised forty thousand pounds. That's right. I remember over the course of that that weekend. The next game, Brilliant. the next game up was Aston Villa versus Leeds. The Leeds Food uh, Food Bank raised uh, just short of eighty thousand pounds. The next game up was Liverpool versus Sheffield United. Um, and we raised £156,000 on the back of that game. Yeah. Uh, in, in, hence my phone ringing off to you <laughs> and the Premier League uh, demanding that I took part in a, in, in a Zoom call with them. Um, to be honest with you, it was, it was quite surreal. Because at the time, I was, on the, I was on the National Council of um, the Football Supporters Association at the time, so the three... Premier League reps took part in the Zoom call, and um, I, 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 I threw the short straw, and I had to be bad cop while they were good cop. So I gave them a double barrels, and I said to them, "What really amazes me is that you're talking about the amounts of money that we've raised. You should have a bigger and a greater concern about the amount of data that we've now got. Yeah, yeah. We've now got a database." with over 70,000 football fans on it, yeah. who all think we're right yeah. and who all think you're wrong. And we're going <laughs> to use that data to the maximum. Yeah. And I said, someone said to me uh, the other day, the Premier League have shot themselves in the foot. And I disagreed with them. I said, I think you've blown your legs off. It's probably the <laughs> biggest uh, cock up with the Premier League. Uh, it's a PR disaster. Yeah. Um, 48 hours later, they decided they were going to pull the plug on pay-per-view football. And that is the power of fans yeah. working together, working collectively. And that's why, Keith, it's been really important that yeah. the whole of this campaign has always been run with the hashtag hunger doesn't wear club colours. So I yeah. think... Well, it's kind of one of the major reasons that we we, 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 we you know we really wanted to discuss, discuss this with you as well is because of that that kind of that power when fans do come together, what they can actually really achieve. And it kind of made uh, what, what I would kind of like to ask really is obviously you're you're a member, you're you you're, you're part of the, the fine act, you've been part of fan activism for some time and, and, and very knowledgeable and respected in that in that in that area, you know. Um I mean, just as part of this story and the evolution of this story, how I mean, how did the, the other, other clubs come on board? Were they were already part? Was it kind of them kind of watching what like yourself and the you know and, and the Liverpool fans were, were, were well, kind I, of I, doing? And... I think watching and observing and, and liking what we were doing. Um, and probably the most interesting one uh, would be the Man City lads. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I remember vividly getting a phone call uh, off a City supporter. And I said, so this isn't a good start. You ringing me, telling me to tell you, tell me. Because it was Friday <laughs> the 13th, and it was the day after the general election. And his only <laughs> comment was, we can't have another five years of this austerity. We want to get involved. We want to have a go. Now, I, I think what you've got to bear in mind, that all these Premier League clubs that have started uh, uh, fan support and food banks and started doing collections, They've all launched them on the day they played either Everton or Liverpool for obvious reasons. Yeah. yeah. We've locked up with them and we've helped them launch. So we'll turn up with the banners in the van. So it, it was quite fortunate that uh, when the, the lads from City Rangers in December, we played City 
um, at the Etihad on New Year's Day. Um, yeah. It was funny, yeah. actually, standing under that flyover under the gazebo, basically cold day, and uh, Alex from Sith, he said to me, he said, Councillor dear, he said, the first 18 donations we've had are off Evertonians. <laughs> That's you. That's you. Yeah, um, okay. um, um, he, 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 he said... And the two that weren't Evertonians, the city supporters who know you. <laughs> um, That's fascinating. Um, 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 when they finished the collection, they were usually disappointed with the amount of stuff that they got. But well, yeah. why wouldn't they be? Um, I, I've always had a simple philosophy about it all the way through. If someone just donates one tin of beans and one kid goes to bed that night, not hungry, who went to bed the night before, being aware to our exercise. And it's about building your brands, if you like. It's about building the momentum. It's about improving what you're doing on social media. It's about yeah. raising people's awareness about who you are and what you are and what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think another really interesting one, the Man United uh, Food Bank was launched um, in, in what the media will tell you uh, is the most competitive and fierce game in the country, Liverpool and Man United. Yeah. Now, can you imagine the uh, Man United Supporters Trust, where it's operated from, which is based on uh, Sir Mac Busby Way. Yeah. Uh, Greater Manchester Police must have thought, hang on, what's going on here? You he wear a scouser's bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Spirit of Shankly, uh, coach. Moses on up there to, 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 to the Man United Trust and all ways to Now, that should have been big news. It should have been picked up by the media. But unfortunately, that's not newsworthy. If, if the Spirit of Shankly uh, coach had gone up there and brought the Man United yeah, yeah. Trust, that'd have been on the news. had all the media. You <clears throat> and, and, yeah. and that's the problem. You, you, you're constantly uh, trying to promote and, and, and gather momentum and get an interest from the press. And, and, and don't get me wrong, we, we've had lots of decent stuff in the press, but nowhere near enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Neville, do you want to get involved? Yeah, I, don't, I just think what, what you've done is, is being repeated now with the Real Men's Union and, and everybody else, because it, it's all about people, isn't it? It's people coming together to say they've had enough of something. And I, th- I think it's great what you've done. I do think you're always going to have a problem because you're going against the Tories and the Tory media. So I think, you know, any avenue that you could have would be great. But I am ashamed of the FA and I'm also ashamed of the PFA because I don't think the PFA have done enough to help you either. I can entirely. The amount of money that's coming in from football. Mm -hmm. And I also think Sky have gone missing over it and BT. And when you think of, if it was me, I'd be sat there with Sky going, if this fella's got 70,000 people, that's 70,000 customers that we could have. Is there any way that we could use them? Because they're not going to be able to sell their Sky or BT or Amazon to anybody who's struggling. So it'd be in their interest to be able to talk to these kind of people, wouldn't it? Because it makes sense. And also, correct me if I'm wrong, there is no big supermarket that's come on board, is there? No, no. In, in, in fairness, Nev, it doesn't, it, it doesn't work like that now. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, and to lighten the mood a little bit, because mm. food insecurity and poverty is a very serious uh, yeah. issue, you know what I mean? Um, how do you attempt to keep that light hearted? How do you attempt to keep it humorous, to keep people involved, to uh, they can get their attention? And you talk about supermarkets, the biggest single donation we've ever had, and people don't realise stuff like this. We got a phone call asking, were we interested in a donation of Jaffa cakes? So I thought, well, if the food bank isn't, I certainly (laughs) (laughs) have. We we, we said to them, yeah, what are you talking about? So they said, we've got 33 pallet loads of Jaffa cakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jaffa cakes. Um, in one Where was my phone call, Dave? I love a Jaffa cake. <laughs> <laughs> Although that stays, that stays in my phone booth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that equated to £47,000 worth of Jaffa cakes. Oh. Um, 
we prided ourselves on anything anyone has ever offered us, we've never said no. Mm -hmm. So foolishly, I yeah, yeah, we'll have them, no drink, we'll get sure to them. Um, the only caveat to it was that we would have an order to the council where they went to. So for argument's sake, if we give two pallet loads to Keith and they got distributed down there, yeah. that, that's that done. Yeah. Believe it or not, we got shot of them in 72 hours. Whoa. Now it reached the stage whereby people will stop answering the phone to us. He was ringing people and asking, will he take any more? And the reality of all that is, is we started off from Liverpool City Centre and we spiralled our way right the way out across Merseyside and into North Wales and we give that a real good hammering. Now, the reality of taking something on like that was the extra responsibility and the extra cost. Of, we had to go with higher vans to do that yeah. because logistically we didn't yeah, have to do yeah. it. But we went out and we done it. Now, they, they came from a supermarket. So we talk about this incredibly, uh, this incredible amount of £47,000, this asset that a supermarket's got. But every day that passed, and as that clock was ticking, that asset was becoming worth less and less and less. Yeah. And Dimensi then it was getting towards its best before days. The asset was becoming a liability. And yeah. um, ultimately, if we hadn't taken them, the likelihood was, and the only options they had had, was to put it in landfill, which I think is an absolute crime, given yeah. that thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of people going hungry in this country, or alternatively, pay a farmer to take it off their hands for them to feed, their, feed the pigs with. Mm -hmm. And that's what's wrong. Now, they, they would have come off a supermarket. What supermarket they came off? We haven't the foggiest. Now, that's not unusual. It happens fairly often that you'll get a dozen pallets, 10 pallets, um, and, and the list goes on. So one of the problems, and I think people uh, fail to, to, to understand this, Great Britain overproduces food. Yeah. Probably a third of the food that they produce goes into landfill. Um, there should be no one going hungry then, really. Absolutely. Uh, no, absolutely. absolutely. And, and what, what should be happening, Keith? There should be incentives. <clears throat> there be supermarkets or, 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 or logistics companies. should be given incentives not to sell it to the farmer. Should be getting tax concessions. Tax concessions, yeah. exactly. It should be built into the Yes. And, and, and the more they do that, and the more the heft the government takes on that, because it, it, it's a revolving circle, isn't it? The but it, that, the, the, the reason we don't do it is because but, we don't want you getting used to handouts. That's the stop in the land state. That was a that was a, a direct decision from the original austerity of Cameron and Osborne. That's what we told you when you stood up and said. We're going to stop the nanny state that there's going to be an end to the stop. And then universal credit was going to roll after that. And it all came from that. That's intentional. That, that's an intentional decision they made there. No, no, no absolutely. But but where, where the government would soon uh, realise. See, it, it's, it, 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 it's a, a, a vicious circle, isn't it? Going round and around and around. Um, it's about poor wages. It's about, how, can, how, how, how can someone live on a minimum wage? Never mind a living wage. Um, I, I think when I first got involved in there uh, and we set up and supporting food banks, the most common phrases you were there at, at, at the time was zero hour contracts and all oh, money on minimum wage. And um, lots of people are quite proud that, proud that they reached the lofty heights of being on a living wage. Now, unfortunately, uh, the cost of living crisis. Well, if the government were giving the companies tax concessions, now let's be brutally honest with you. As far as I'm concerned, the worst saying there is at the moment, and think about this in work poverty. Yeah. Yeah. Now, excuse my French, what the fuck? Is in work. Right, yeah. What it means is they're not paying you enough. Yeah. No, it's a dichotomy. Well, exactly. One so contradicts the other one. Yeah. 
So how does someone on a zero hour contract work harder when he's only got four hours this week? <laughs> you know, well, how, how does someone on, on a living wage or the minimum wage, or how does someone who's claiming tax credits or whatever actually break that circle? And, and I think it, 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 there are important points to make. And that's why what, what, one of the reasons, and I know when we first started off, uh, from supporting food banks. And I remember uh, me and Ian having a discussion, and we were probably both opposed in principle to food banks. Yeah. Because there's yeah. this element of, um, uh, 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 of it being charity yeah. that we're actually doing the government's job for them. We're bailing the government out. However, and I will always counter that, in 1985, uh, I, I was uh, in, in Gabriel Unemployed Centre at the time. And we had the most successful minor support group was in Kirby. Um, we used to feed um, uh, feed uh, 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 Canick uh, in, in Staffordshire and um, uh, and, and Marty in the Ronda, in, in the Ronda. Uh, absolutely smashed it. You know what I mean? Fast forward that on ten years, had two years supporting Liverpool Jockers, and I I dare anyone to say. That collecting food for miners or striking dock workers um, is, is, is charity. It isn't. It's right. working class solidarity. Right. It does looking after our own people. Yeah, I I, I kind of think though that way. I, I I I agree with you on all of that. But I think I think all of us kind of know, and I think you know, um, I think you know, we're kind of where we are, where we are, because you know. Hunger is, is, is a political choice, in, in, in my yeah, opinion. You know, it's a political choice. Austerity is a political choice. There was absolutely no need for it. You consider, you know, there's a lot of talk about like the economy at the moment, you know. And you know, you know there's very few, few people sitting there asking, you know, uh, asking the question about what what the economy is actually for. I mean, you, 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 you know, we kind of live in a society where we serve the economy rather than the economy serves us. Now, if we had a situation where the economy was maybe saving us, maybe there wouldn't be as much hunger as exactly what's going on, you know, as we, as we, as we currently have. Now, going back to that, that particular point, I, I kind of know what, what you're getting at with, with, with the, you know, with the probably the reservations that you have, because I remember when Cameron came in and we asked this question of Andy Burnham, when Andy Burnham was, for, or I asked the question of, of him, you know, are we kind of now, you know, uh, living in... Um, you know, in David uh, Cameron's big society, you know, which is the, what he was presenting to us at the time, where they were going to reduce the uh, involvement in the state and in, in, uh, reduce the involvement in the state of people's welfare and increase yeah. the responsibility or push back the responsibility to charity and society, which is kind of what's happened because they kind of know we're not going to let our own go hungry. They're not going to let our own fall down. We're going to help them pick them up and they kind of know that. So kind of what they've done with our studies, he would trip people up and take them, let them fall down, knowing that we're going to pick them up because we have to. That's kind of what we have to do, and and that and that. So and then that's all all admirable. But this is a political choice for me, you know. That's kind of my, my opinion. But I think austerity and the, and and uh, uh, and all of those things caused this particular uh, this crisis, and it's intentional. It was a political choice, you know. So people still vote for the Tories. And people still, as people still come, we all help each other as much as we can. But, but at the same time, there has to come a point where you say no, not, not to helping people, but to the people who run the country. And I don't, I don't think, because of the way the media you know, portrays everything, then at the moment, it's still very biased towards the Tories. We need to be solid, you know, have solidarity between everybody and everybody sticks together and they push them out. The only way we're going to build a society that we want is by us building it and making the politicians who are supposed to work for us do what we want them to do. And I know that's an ideal world, but we, like you say, you've got 70,000 fans. That's power. You know, the political parties have power, but the people, are, people have the power in the end to vote with their feet or vote with their hands, whatever it be. And, and make a society that we want. You know, at the moment, we're a top-down society where we should be a bottom-up society where we should be judged on how we treat our most vulnerable people. Uh, and we're not judged on that. We're judged on how, how much the, the, the government makes or the country makes, you know, you know because of business and opinion. 
that's bollocks really because you should have a better way of doing it. If everybody's got a decent standard of living, then you don't need food banks, you don't need anything else. You ju- you just need to a decent way of life and the, but the politicians work for us and we seem to think that we have to fall in line with everything they do we don't because we can just say fuck you we're going to do something different yeah, but that was intentional but yeah, I need to say this that without the likes of Dave Kelly yeah. without the likes of those people literally doing it themselves yeah. that, that when they rolled out universal credit when they sat down at the very first meeting and said what we're going to do is we're going to combine all the benefits, but what we're going to do is you're not going to get rent money anymore, or you're not going to get this. We're just going to give you the figure, and you have to work it out how to pay it. We're going to cut all of them, and then we're going to give you it in one big pot, and then it's who you like the best. Do you like eating, or do you like paying your lefty bill? Do you like having the telly on for the kids, or do you like getting them in the bath twice a week, or whatever it is what families do? And it was those that that was. That was political intention. It went from an idea on the table into doctrine, into law. Those That took five years to do that. This was intentional, and that's beyond argument. However, without the likes of Dave Kelly getting into the trenches, man, and it needs to be said, I believe you took your original inspiration from Celtic doing a similar initiative. But what you said before about, about the Newcastle thing and, and Sunderland and Newcastle, that needs to be one solved. Man United and Man City, you've shown this is possible. Granted, we are, this city's left wing, whether you like it or not. 4,000 people voted for Tories, apparently, in Walton like, at the last election. But that's the first time that's ever happened in my lifetime. It's We, we are a receptive audience, but without the characters who do not get paid to do this, who just see a wrong and want to right it, so that's where we're lacking. That's where the, 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 the movement in inverted commas, it's disappeared. There isn't my father and his generation, they, they'd be turning their hair out saying, what happened to the working class? Well, what happened to the working class is they all got 35 grand a year and decided they weren't working class anymore. So the problem with it was, is, is we needed somebody, people, uh, groups of people all over the country to say no, no, this can be solved. And just going back to what you said before, that what you did with the pay per view in microcosm, what you said before actually was that you got 70,000 contributors or interactions, but what you didn't say was that you hadn't done the whole of the fixture list, you'd done three or four games and got 70,000. That's the bit what frightened the Premier League. Because you got to 70,000 in four games. If you'd have left it for four, 38 games against each other and the middle of the fixtures all in that, imagine those numbers. What I'm trying to say is the potential was realised. The idealist potential of this is not a bad idea, this, to getting it working, to go from a fucking trolley into a van, into a bigger van, and the numbers and the weight, what you're saying, that gives me hope that things can get better. It's the, one of the only things that right now, and I needed to say to you, well, I see you all the time. I often sit on coaches where I'm a yard away from you, but I've never had this conversation with you. So I need to take this opportunity to say, you get, you, you, I properly respect you for what you've done and how you represent our club and our fan base. And, and I, I truly think we need to take a moment to say, because we're trying to inspire other people we're starting to inspire. We already know this, but the people who listen to this may not know it, or the people who listen to this may feel similar or know somebody who feels similar. That's what we're looking to do. Well, but, but just, just, just on that, Dave, and you, you're absolutely spot on in, in, in what you're saying. Um, when fans supporting food banks started off seven years ago, it's certainly not the organisation now what it was then. Um, and, and it's changed uh, dramatically. I'm not particularly because I've changed or Ian Burns changed or any of our volunteers have changed. It's changed because predominantly when we first started off, and it picks up on the points that you've made before, because it, hunger is a political choice, austerity being imposed on our class. Let's get that blatantly clear. This is a class war. Their class 
it's trying to go to war with our class and they're trying to keep us under the thumb. When farm support and food banks first started off, predominantly most of the service users were people who were homeless, in crisis, or about to be migrated over to Universal Credit and were left for six weeks, eight weeks with no, uh, no, no means of supporting themselves. You fast forward that on then to the pandemic, um, th th this will probably lead in nicely to the, the pantries that we're now operating, to be honest with you. We opened the pantry in West Derby, and the idea of the pantry, uh, and again, the austerity thing, we've got to get these people to stop wanting handouts. Well, they're only getting handouts because you're not paying them a decent rate to live in. Yeah. Well, that's uh, another argument for another day. So the idea of the pantry is you sign up and become a member of the pantry. And rather than be given three carrier bags full of food because you're in crisis and you're getting three bags of crap, let's not beat about the bush, you're getting three bags of crap, which is basically a stick and plaster for a gave and wound because you're in crisis. The poor bastard who's using the food bank has walked in through the door in crisis and feels like he's failed and his family's failed. It feels like he let them all down. So we, we set up the pantries. So to become a member of the pantry, it's free. And you pay £3.50 per visit. And for that £3.50, you get fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, fresh meat, and 10 everyday essentials. It's the value of £20 plus. That's then supplemented by things like 33 pallet rolls of Jaffa cakes, Go on the table. Um, you, 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 you talk about Jeremy Corbyn. When Corbyn comes to the um, comes to the pantry, he was fascinated. You could see him staring at something. And I said, So what are you staring at? And he said, That sign on, on, on the thing, what's that for? And the sign said, Shoplifters won't be prosecuted. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, That's the only happen in Liverpool. <laughs> Anywhere else. He said, well, why should we explain? Well, that's all being donated, so we've got lots of it, and we yeah. just tell people to help themselves. Yeah. Um, it's self-policing, because they self-police themselves. So yeah. we've got Keith Millen, uh, Mullen, who's got a, 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 a taste for Jaffa's cake, walked away with 12 boxes. <laughs> so hang on a minute. You live in one bed flat, piss off. But, <laughs> and, 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 but from a serious point of view, so that pantry launched... Um, in West Derby. And believe it or not, it wasn't people on the Universal Credit coming in. It wasn't people who were homeless coming in. Yeah. It was people, the first influx was people who had been furloughed. Right. You had people coming in who were only getting 80% of what they previously had. Now, let's be brutally honest with you, you go and get a mortgage based on 100% of your pay. Yeah. So if 20% of it's been taken away at one fell swoop, you've got problems, haven't you? And the yeah. problem is, do I put that money to one side for my mortgage so I've got a roof over my head, or do I put a meal on the table and feed the family? Um, the demographic of people who are using has changed totally. Um, when, when you're listening to these people, uh, they turn up quite apologetic that I've worked all my life, I've never claimed benefits. This yeah. is a whole new... Wales is a totally different uh, arising. Now the the, 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 the the now the beauty of that, we operate six pantries across the city now. We fed over seventy three thousand people last year via the pantry. That's incredible. Now, 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 now that is the power of the collective. Now I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Within them 73,000 uh, people who've been there, uh, uh, be, be, being fed, there's lots of people of influence who've got fairly decent jobs. And um, now what happens is they will come and volunteer. Most of our volunteers at the pantries now started off being service users. So it stops mm -hmm. us having to repeatedly increase the size of our volunteer corps because I'm, 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 that's the beauty. So straight away, you take the £3.50 off someone, but you then tell them, you're now a member. That's a movement. 
you've now got an input. That's how you start a movement. Yeah. No, absolutely. You've now got an input. You've got a say in what we do and when we do it and how we do it. And it's actually empowering local people. It's empowering communities. And them pantsies, we tried to make them pantsies um, as, as light hearted. We play music at them. We've had musicians turn up at them. We've had people turning up there uh, doing sketch clubs at them. We make it an event. And um, I remember one of the lads going to where the one in Odds Lane last week said he was at the bus stop and he heard two women getting on the bus with trolleys. Said they were going to the farmers market on Lodge Lane. Well, how, how proud would that be as someone from fan support and food banks? And, yeah. and, and it wasn't a chore that they were going there. Yeah. That it was a, it was an event, it was a big part of their day. Yeah. So the mobile, sorry, sorry, Matt, do you want to come in? Yeah, I was just gonna say how many then now are are pensioners? Uh, 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 but there's things like that. Uh, there's, <laughs> There's people will will do a shot for ten pensioners in sheltered accommodation. Mm. So you'll get someone younger, able-bodied. The, the, the ten pensioners have signed up; they'll come and collect it. Uh, it, it, it the likes of yourself and in your background, now in school, uh, all, all the schools that are close to where the pantries are now have actually signed up to membership, and they're taking food offers. So literally, from six to sixty plus. And all they all, all ages in between. Yeah. Because um, we were laughing the other day about uh what the hell the way we're carrying on here, we're gonna end up having to do a collect and collect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean I mean go going back to something what like Davis just kind of sort of come in with there is it like talking about what you what you fundamentally created here between Everton and Liverpool fans here is it's it's it, it's kind of almost has turned into a movement, it's turned yeah. into Quite something quite significant. And I kind of like the mobile pantry idea because it kind of um, it's it's almost like like the old co-ops, you know, the the the, 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 the origins of kind of co-op where your you know the, you know your communities that are, are being start to take control of their own uh, of their their own food and how they're getting food and how and their access to food and I, I just think that's a fascinating thing, you know. I, I really I really do. I mean. Are the mobile pantry thing that is going to be something that is going to be going national, or is that just just a local thing at the moment? Um, we we had Newcastle down here last week, um, and we're meeting them in a couple of weeks at the Durham Miners Gala uh, with a few of them starting to roll them out up in Newcastle. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, it, 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 if you like, maybe where the trailblazers on that, and all the lads down in Southampton uh, are doing something similar, but on a smaller scale. But they, they they're asking about. How do we do it? Um, yeah. You know, logistically, it's a difficult thing to start doing because you've got to bear in mind uh, <laughs> you need vans, you need a refrigeration, you know what I mean? You, you, yeah. you, you Petrol charges. Do it. Fuel charges are through the roof yeah, as well. Absolutely. absolutely. I need, can I ask this one thing? It, it, it's like the elephant in the room for me. The whole Marcus Rashford thing, I think we're all agreed that for a footballer, with, particularly with his background, like ourselves or working class kids, he knows what it's like to be on the other side of that 80 grand a week contract or whatever it is he's on now, 40 grand a week or whatever it is. So it was laudable. However, the bit, what the aspect I'd like to discuss with you is how the media and sitting MPs, often cabinet members, would mention him in that House of Commons by name. It the, the 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 subtext of that being, they didn't see him as a hero. They saw him as a threat. And I, I, I'm referring you back to what Keith, what I said to you originally, and Keith has just also alluded to, is the movement aspect. And what I was trying to take you back to is what I said to you originally, is that the, the heroes, the people who begin these movements what all the people agree with and then follow subsequently have to inordinately, percentage-wise, come from those communities or have been exposed in some way, parents, grandparents, lineage of some description by marriage, family, whatever, friends, to have been exposed to those conditions. And what I seen with Marcus Rashford was, how do you argue with a, with a, with a rich kid who just wants to feed poor kids? 
And he's not even asking you for any money to do it. He just yeah. kind of got it going and did it. And yet, he still made him a target. Do you see if this movement was to grow bigger, as the key just said to you then, and say maybe become, instead of regional, kind of at least north of England, <coughs> in the Midlands and then south, maybe do it piecemeal? But well, do you see that as being a problem? But, but, but I think I, I think what you need to understand, Dave, it's already national. Uh, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. I got a, um, a, a, I got a couple of messages today. Uh, we, yeah, we, we've we been doing stuff at Millwall, believe it or not. Yeah. Really? I used to live next door in other flats, the big yeah. flats. Yeah. I used to live in them. I but squatted, it, but I lived there. We go down to the, there's, there's, there's a festival on every area down last year uh, and, and, and actually done a pantry. At a, at, a, at a concert in, 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 in uh, Bermondsey, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. With, with a, a young girl who played for uh, Millwall Lionesses. Uh, uh, Iron Sport and Food Banks, we do stuff with them, do stuff yeah. with Southampton. So it, it, it already is national. Uh, I, I think it's probably a good time to, to, to introduce them. I, I should be Jim White now and go and put my yellow tie on because. Uh, <laughs> Breaking news, we're talking about going national. Um, I, I, I'm absolutely delighted that Fan Support and Food Banks is going to be launching in Scotland on the 19th of July. Fabulous. Brilliant. Now, is that an exclusive? Is this an exclusive? I've got an exclusive. You've got it. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, the, 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 you, 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 one of you has mentioned it earlier on about Celtic doing yeah, yeah. movement collections. Uh, yeah. uh, the, the Green Brigade at Celtic have always done an annual collection as a one-off. Um, are hugely successful at it as a one-off. Um, we've now got Celtic, Kilmarnock, Parsec Thistle and the two Dundee clubs are on board. They're all going over to Glasgow on the 19th of July with us to launch uh, the Food Bank Collection at the Celtic Blackburn pre-season game. Yeah. And that'll yeah. roll out uh, again uh, right across Scotland. Hibs and Hearts are already doing stuff. Um, so that's going to grow and grow. Uh, they're going to do it all under our banner. Uh, and the only difference will be it'll be Fans of Bolton Food Bank Scotland. Scotland and, yeah. um, uh, it, it, it is it's exciting times it really is exciting times and it astonishes me the amount of like-minded people that is out there who want to be a force for good and a force for change in their community well I mean, it, it, it's fascinating that you know and I, I, I just have the motivation to be doing all this I, 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 the, 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 the time that we're actually living in I, I actually think it's fascinating I, I, I think I, but I think you've, you're hitting the nail on the head you know I mean I think you know, our, our, our kind of tribalistic rivalries are, are what keeps us apart, really. And, you know, the media play on that and and, and football's kind of has become full of that, you know. And yeah. But we've got more in common with each other than than, than what separates us, you know. And and we, and we probably find when you sit down, like we, me and Dave, we do a kind of a lot with various groups of football fans, like the West Ham lads we know or Newcastle lads that we know. Yeah. And you know this as well, you know. You know, and we're lots of different kinds of football fans. You sit down and... And you have a drink with them, or you have a chat with them before and after game. You got more in common with each other than some of these people that are telling you that you need to be fighting each other. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and and I think what you, you're doing with the fan support and feedback thing is is, is a real testament to that. Okay. And I actually think it's fantastic. Do you want to tell us a little bit about friends of fans support yeah, and feedback? Yeah. Just, just just before we do, and I think it's important this because um, it'll, it'll it'll morph from that. Uh, uh, into the friends of uh, fan support and food banks. Over the last couple of years, um, we've quite aggressively gone out and spoken to Evertonians and Liverpoolians across the globe. I'll give an example. On Derby Day, we contacted the New York Blues and the New York Reds and yeah. asked them to watch the match together. <laughs> there was a little bit mumbling and discontent and yeah. not with them bastards and all of yeah. that. And then um, it settled down a little bit and uh, they felt it was a good idea. And a couple of years ago, uh, they got together for the first time for the Merseyside Derby and they raised three grand for us. Oh, yeah. Now, we were quite shocked that they'd done that because that's what we didn't want them to do. 
Yeah. Well, now for the Merseyside Derby, they get together and they raise money to go and feed homeless people in New York. She and uh, send her across the Atlantic. She's there. Now, that's not just in New York, that's in a number of cities. Um, I, I, I'm, how good is that? I, I think the government are going to be I'm, terrified of you, Dave. <laughs> and, 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 and that's why football is an incredibly powerful vehicle to move the message on. Uh, and, and, so you're speaking to the Reds and Blues in New York, who've got no relationship with each other. They've never watched a match together and are highly suspicious of each other. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and using our initiative to draw them together, they come together and they raise now. How, how good is that, that? Something that started here on Merseyside. You know what it is, though? It's fun, if you break it down to its basic elements, it's fundamentally inspiring. That's what brings people in because there's obviously no personal profit to be in a world where we've got Instagram influencers influencing kids who aren't even 10 years of age. Everything's about image, and if you haven't got the latest thing, so everybody's got to be in it for themselves in order to be competing in this doggy dog world. And 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 socialism with a small s, or or caring about your community, or caring about others aside from yourself and and your immediate coattery is gone out of fashion. So what it is, it's inspiring, and that in fact is the aspect what then ultimately brings the other people, because you've just listed clubs like Newcastle and Sunderland and Man United and Man City and the Scottish clubs and ourselves in Liverpool. Let's not say we live in some utopia where everyone got walks around, you have scouts here, scouts there. That's not the truth in 2022. It may be I've been a little bit less than it is 35 years ago, but it isn't like that anymore because of the influence of foreigners, the, the demographic change, everything. But it's a fact. So for you to be able to bring these people together under these sorts of presses of Brexit media and, and fake news and, and double speak and every fact can be spinning the other, spun the other way, to be able to be just standing there with a torch, it, 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 um, 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 metaphorically speaking, and saying, we need to get round together, that's, that's in itself is inspiration. And I think we should take a moment to do it because maybe somebody else will see it as an example and, well, and use it as well, what, 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 what makes all that really important, and it's something that, uh, that we wouldn't have time to discuss, um, but there's, 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 it's always the case that there's uh, Everton, Liverpool, Man United, Man City, Leeds, Aston Villa, West Ham, Newcastle, yeah. Sunderland, We're talking about big clubs. Let's be brutally honest here. Grassroots football is just as important and is just as involved. Um, I, I, how proud was I when uh, someone from an under 14 football team asked, could their team be being offered sponsorship? And he said to the fellow who offered to sponsor and buy the kit, I will on one condition, you let us put fan support and food banks on the kids' kit. So you've got a load of under 14s running around with a Red, white, and blue uh, kit with their uh, fan support and food banks on it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, how humble does it make you feel when you go to a presentation in the summer that a full league all collects food for the food bank because they know we get nothing in during the summer? And, and, and that's, uh, that, that's why uh, we, we certainly can't sustain what we're doing under the current model, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, because you, you, you've got, uh, 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 dare I even say, you've got famine and feast. Uh, I, I, I remember putting the tweet out a couple of weeks ago, which uh, broke my heart, actually saying, the cupboard's bare, we've got nothing in the cupboard, we need help. Yeah. Now, that, that's always going to happen, uh, always going to happen, you know what I mean, during the close season. Uh, and that's why we've come up with, uh, we're, we're, we're going to launch uh, within the next uh, week or so, um, friends of fan support and food banks. Uh, I, I, and the idea about that is to make what we're doing more sustainable long term. Um, you've got people uh, like yourself, uh, Keith and Dave, sitting in the Winslow to the last minute, haven't got time to come to the food bank, 
would probably really support it. But you're getting your last pints in before you, before you go before you go in for your ninety minutes of misery. I'm uh, actually waiting for Mullen outside the ground with tickets. Is what I'm doing, but whatever. <laughs> no, no, but, but we're looking to. Uh, uh, how simple it. Uh, uh, when we started this off, the simple concept was forty thousand Evertonians going to Goodison Snow bring once at uh, once in. Yeah. Fifty thousand Liverpoolians going to Anfield all bring once in. No one's going hungry in this city. Yeah. Simple concept. Yeah. From the bottom up, grassroots community group, from my volunteers, you know what I mean? Jobs are good. But you've then got a, things like to factor in a pandemic and no access to food, close season, no access to food. Now, if us fall all through 350 and to give someone a free go at one of our pantries, it's actually a win-win situation. Because straight away, there's a family going to get a, 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 enough food to keep them going over a week. Can I just ask on that then? I don't, when I was doing some research on you, it said about the, um, what's it called, that, the Right to Food campaign. Yeah. And, and that it was, it was it's, in, it's a, literally, it's a political initiative. They're looking to roll it out in the government. Yeah. But didn't, it, I'm correct in saying, that Liverpool City Council have then shrined it that, that this will be the first city to do that. Is that the case? No, no, no. no. Believe it or not, Dave, there's the United Nations Declaration that was signed by our government 70 years ago yeah. to give people the right to food. Now, like lots of other United Nations declarations, just because it's being enshrined, uh, being signed yeah. doesn't mean it's being enshrined in law. Yeah. Although yeah. they've signed that they believe people should have the right to food, it hasn't been enshrined in law. So our right to food campaign was to get it enshrined in law. Yeah. So you actually had a, a legal right to have access to food. Now, this isn't talking about free food or handouts. It's about having access to food. And I'll give you an example, and I'll use myself as that example. During the height of the pandemic, I, I had to shield. I shielded for 17, 17 months. Couldn't go out the door. Well, I'm, I live on my own. How am I supposed to feed, feed myself? How am I supposed to be? So there would be things like that would, would, would make it. And now, the, the beauty of getting that legislation enshrined in law We've asked the question now, out of a, 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 a universal credit weekly payment, how much is, is allotted for the various different components that people will spend on? So whether it be uh, uh, housing costs, uh, utility bills and food, and the government can't give it an answer, and they won't give it an answer because the answer is unpalatable because the payments they give you isn't yeah. enough. It's not supposed well, to be enough. So we, 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 we set the right to food campaign up, uh, got the 10,000 signatures fairly quickly. And once you reach 10,000, uh, the cabinet's office has got a right to hear an answer what your question is. And they wrote to us when we got the 10,000, but didn't answer the question. <laughs> now, believe it or not. The parliamentary watchdog had to write back to the cabinet office and ask them to answer the question, question that they were asked. So they were reprimanded by their own uh, by their own committee and parliament. And um, that's the problem you've got, isn't it? Yeah. Um, with regards to rights of food, the rights of food is likely to happen in Scotland very yeah. soon. I'd have thought yeah. Scotland would be first. Yeah. Wales won't be that far behind. Um, yeah. They talk about the United Kingdom. Well, how can it be all well and good for a Scot to have the rights of food and a Welshman to have the rights of food? Yeah, yeah. But an Englishman can't. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, it, it, it makes no it sense. Makes no. Yeah, makes so sense. The, 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 the whole idea of fan, uh, friend, friends of fans supporting food banks is to stop the need. And, uh, 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 and, and, and God bless them. Uh, it breaks my heart seeing Colin Harvey shuffle along 
Yeah, man, man. A couple of bags of food to donate. Yeah, get to the food bank. Can I easy believe? patron. That's easy, isn't he? Still your patron, Colin. Sorry, Colin's the patron. Of, of yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, it breaks my heart to see him shuffling along carrying two bags. But I'll tell you what, I'll lay in a shirt, shine. He's there. So the idea of uh, bank support and food bank starting them shuffling down Goodison Road, uh, carrying two bags. Just sign up, become a friend, uh, a friend of fan support and food banks. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm donate three fifty for a family, or if you can afford a tenant yeah. or a tenant into yeah. the pot. Now that that enables us then to the, um, to budget better instead of beg, steal, and borrowing from elsewhere, yeah. uh, because the need is becoming <coughs> ever greater. So is that is that like a three fifty like a subscription thing where you can like you could like you could ask most of people who were kind of in in employment like someone like myself is okay I'll I'll, I'll donate three pound three pound fifty uh, every month for for the next twelve months or something like that is it yeah, like yeah, yeah, but just 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 basically uh, Keith get people to uh, as I said the, the three fifty a ten or fifty yeah yeah what well, you can afford yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. what you can afford them. But the three fifty is linked to the pansy fee. Oh, well, yeah, why use the three fifty? Is what I do yeah. need to say as well, just on that point you said about Colin, Melanie, Colin's daughter, is a member of our team who makes these podcasts. Yeah, yeah. It's just that we 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 Alan, who you met when I met you at Arsenal. Yeah. Alan Seeker dug at it from Twitter. He runs Neville's Twitter account. Alan is also a colleague, and there's two other lads, in fact, three other lads. We were also involved with just that we're here today. So we here, because of Melanie's involvement in our project, but also a dad being the patron, which is why I mentioned it. Yeah. Melanie's on our team. So we're kind of we've been we've been even when we spoke to Andy Burnham, Keith alluded before we had Andy Burnham on, and we spoke about your work with Andy yeah. Burnham. Yeah. So what I'm saying is it might be time for you. We you know Neville's account alone. It is 170,000 on, on Twitter alone. We ourselves and our friends of ours, all of us in this group now, just amongst Evertonians, we, we can get a voice. It's time. If you're going to get serious about funding, it, it, we're the only people you can... But, but, but think, uh, the, the, the thing you made, uh, the, the, the point you made, uh, to, to, to be honest with you, is, um, it, it, is that Liverpool City Council were the first council to sign the pledge to support the rights of food. Yeah. Uh, does that mean that the, the city council is going to feed, uh, go out and feed the whole of the city? Well, the answer is no. no. Liverpool was the first to sign the pledge. Interestingly enough, Andy Burnham was uh, beaten at That's the finishing right. line. Yeah. Um, Manchester, Greater Manchester local authorities, 13 of them signed it and one fell swoop, mm. which was quickly followed by. Um, by Liverpool City region when uh, the, the six local authorities on Merseyside all signed up to it. There's 48 local authorities throughout the whole of the UK signed up to the Rights of Food campaign. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's from as far north as uh, uh, Glasgow, right the way down to the so uh, south coast. What's really interesting about that, and uh, uh, obviously I don't think anyone would question who or what our politics are. Yeah. However, we're not party political. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was really significant about um, uh, the, 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 the job uh, Andy Burnham and uh, Greater Manchester did, there's actually a Tory council in Greater Manchester their signatories and they've signed up to the Rights of Food campaign. Yeah. So, uh, so so the, the, it, it's not Labour, it's not Tory, yeah, 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 not yeah. Green. So we've got a Green Council yeah. um, in, in Devon and, and Brighton. Um, we've got uh, a, a couple of Sinn Féin local authorities in Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, because let, let's, let's be brutally honest with you, I know I've done stuff myself at Neville in, in, in Ireland. It's just as bad, if not worse, in, in places. It's not unique to the UK, is it? No. no, um, no. And, 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 and that's the key to it all. It's the, mm. the key is to get not just football involved in this, but to get the politicians involved in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How much? How much work do you do with unions, Dave? How much do I do? With, well, I, I, that, that's my day job. I'm an organizer for United. Yeah, no. Oh, but, how much do they support? <laughs> 
How much do you like all the other unions support you? Um, quite a lot, but dare I say, not enough. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I was going to read something out here, but I'm conscious of the fact that uh, this is being recorded. So when when we, we go offline and not record it, I'll, I'll yeah. read it out here. Uh, Unite the union. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 the signed the pledge to rights of food, as of the GMB, the FBU, the RMT. The list is endless. Um, I, I, I think someone I don't know. Ian Bain was uh, on a. Uh, who would have ever thought you'd see the day where there was a Labour MP on a picket line with barristers outside the Old Bailey? No, what, yeah, what has the world come to? Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. what it's come to. So we've got extremely uh, good close links with the unions. Uh, who will often tip you the wink that you can get such, such a thing. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to say the GMB, uh, uh, for the fact that they've uh, um, got members in and staff in the yeah. back, I'll get your ass up here, is, is a pallet loads of uh, disposable nappies. Fantastic. So we, we use uh, the communication workers union, we do loads of stuff with them, the FBU. Uh, uh, we only do stuff with the FBU if we can be blue watched on. <laughs> what work do you do with Unison? Uh, not a great deal, other than oh, only at branch level level. Right, okay. Why is that? Um, possibly because there's not enough hours in the day. Right, okay. Um, but, but, uh, I do lots of stuff with local branches. I'm, I'm, I, 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 I've, I've always said, and I think you should copyright it. I started off at the bottom, I liked it that much, I made it a career move to stay there. Uh, so I, I, I do lots of stuff with lots of local branches, you know what I mean? Um, I, I, I don't know, I, and I don't know how Ian Byrne copes, because although he's got to go and sit in that chamber facing them, uh, must be the absolute worst case scenario. That's probably the worst job you could have an MP doing your job properly in Parliament. He, he, he meets uh, a lot with the general secretaries of the unions. Mm. I know we recently met uh, with the unison. Um, and, and as I said, I, I'd be loath to criticise um, any unions that done something. I would criticise the unions who haven't done anything. Absolutely. 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 I, I, I know. Um, where it, it's really difficult, uh, Neville. Particularly, uh, and, and you'll know this better than most, given your background as a as a professional footballer. Loads of people will always say to us, "Well, what do the players give you?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll tell you here and now, players have been incredibly generous and supportive, uh, yeah. financially and in kind. And there's lots of yeah. players uh, donated considerable sums. Um, I take my ass off to them enormously. On the basis, yeah. don't want no publicity. Yeah. No to shoot the yeah. Because uh, I can see the headline in the paper. Yeah. They can't do that for that. Yeah. yeah. Give, yeah. Me, why did you give it to them? And why did yeah. you give it to yeah. them? And all the rest of it. And again, that's the world we live in, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I would much rather criticise those who don't rather than those who do. Yeah. 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 Well, I, that's that's a kind of. Um, you know, I, I I think most of them get it, don't they? You know, I think most of them. You know, when you look at you look at what kind of most of your footballers and the, and the connections that they got with the fans, and you know, and they kind of see that you're seeing your own fan uh, community and the communities it comes comes from, so like suffering in same kind of way. They kind of get it, you know, which is which is a good thing, you know. I, 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 <laughs> there's a fella Joe Mates at Goodison every single game at Goodison. And what, what, one of the good things we we've always attempted to form a relationship with the donor because without the yeah. donor making the donation, we've got nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And what tends to happen is you'll get the same people who go to the same volunteer and and, and, and they know each other intimately. And there's this fellow, and he's getting on. He must be in his late sixties. Walks past and never utters a word or has eye contact with anyone. He's always got an overcoat on and his hand slides in his pocket and he pulls out a small tin of tuna and passes it over and nods and just carries on walking. 
Yeah. I can't tank it as I'll ever tone in. I've never met one of them before, dude. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, believe it or not, <laughs> the coach was going past, the air was blue. There was fireworks going off. We were absolutely well in World Trade. And he stopped and he spoke to me. He put his hand in his pocket and he pulled a multi-pack of smoke <laughs> unit. And he went, let's keep you going through the summer. Oh, I love it. Now, that to me epitomises who love we it. are or who we yeah. are to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that one fella donating that to the tuna yeah. is exactly what we want. That's yeah. what gets us over the finishing line. Yeah. Uh, because he's regular. You know, you can bank on him. And that's yeah. a, you can literally look at your box and say, like I said, he'll be along in a minute with his, uh, with his tuna. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? That's yeah. what makes what we do sustainable. Yeah. Uh, and, and hopefully that's that's what uh, fans, uh, uh, friends of fans supporting food banks will enable us to do, to be far more structured in, in, in what we're doing, rather than living on the seats of our pants. Yeah. Well, it, it, you know, it's it's like anything in an organisation, um, like like what it is you've created, you know, yeah, it's a, you know, it, 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 they, these types of type things take time to kind of evolve. I think what you've done is absolutely fascinating, uh, and I think it's it's commendable. You know, um, you probably saved a, a, a lot of people from going hungry. What well, you have saved a lot of people from and going continue hungry. and continue to, to save to them. do so. Yeah, yeah but, um, I, I, I think another another one, and I, I remember sitting down with Denise Barrett back and down mm-hmm. um, and having a conversation. And there was a, an organisation set up uh, in Glasgow by three young girls, Celtic supporters, called On The Ball. And they, they, their mission was to get football clubs to provide uh, sanity products yeah, yeah, yeah. in the stadiums. And they've done a magnificent job, you know what I mean? And uh, I remember uh, sitting in the office with Denise and said, uh, uh, I, I'm probably going to have a conversation with you that you never thought you would have with someone like me. Yeah. But I'm not embarrassed to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. People come into the stadium for the first time, young girls and have a period. Why, yeah. aren't, you, why aren't you providing sanity products? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm pleased to say Everton stood up to the plate. There was no arguments. Um, and, and Liverpool did very quickly after. Now, yeah. that's not because of us. That's because of them uh, t- three young girls in Scotland yeah. uh, actually had the bottle to go in France, uh, something that's totally male-dominated, you know what I mean, and, and used fan activism and used the collective to get things to happen. But if you look at, if you don't mind me interjecting for a second, just to take evidence, actually, we're all aware of this subject. You didn't know this, Dave. But Melanie w- was put this p- specific issue up for the podcast episode because because she I felt so to strong, it. she said felt so strongly about it. But what it is is that Everton in particular sell it just as it, it's at all of our clubs. So I'm going to use it as the example. We sell our club saying there's more youngsters under 16 season ticket holders in our ground that percentage-wise, of 39,000 than anybody else in the Premier League. I believe that to be the case off the top of my head. We're definitely in the top three. So if that's the case, and you split that gender down the middle, well, half of them people are girls. So they're your future customers. They're the, they're the next 40 years of the club. So if you do them a favour when they're 12, 13, 14, they might remember that when you've had three kids and the husband's a red, and he's saying, shall I go to pub and watch these, or will I go to match <laughs> and do that? That's long-term investment in your business, is actually what it is. Yeah. However, that wasn't why Evan done it. Evan done it for different reasons. But if you widen that out to the whole game of football, why wouldn't they embrace that when when the women's Euros is on two nights? They're playing two nights. It, it's, lot, it, it's on national TV now. This is a major facet of the game. Why wouldn't you do it? It's like you. Someone needs to lead first. And in this case, it was three girls at Celtic. Yeah. But it's, it doesn't make the, the point that the issue shouldn't have been embraced all along. That's well, what I'm trying to say. Well, the, the, the funny thing is, and fair play to Everton, Everton invited them down here when they introduced yeah. it. 
and inv and invited them down for the normal corporate gig, you know what I mean? And pat yeah. them on the back and get a yeah. photograph and yeah, yeah, yeah. bread and um, get the girls to do. They knocked the corporate gig back. <laughs> and stood with us and, and, and done the food bank collection for three hours yeah. and just went in for the game, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, so fair, fair play to them. Um, therein lies the problem as well, though, Dave. So Everton, talk about pushing an open door. We were dragged in through an open door. Yeah, of course we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you, you take that face value and then you start hearing stories. And what, what they did initially... <laughs> they, they were free but you had to get a token off a steward so do you see a girl going into a stadium for the first time and having a period in the stadium totally unprepared for it looking for the stewards oh, no. oh I know I, 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 oh there he is down there I'll go and oh, get a no. token so yeah. I, 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 I had to speak to them about that yeah. And I said, yeah well people might just take them I'd like to think that anyone who takes them so I've got to be brutally honest with you. I stopped. Uh, I, I I stopped robbing the bog rolls out of God or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't you be playing you know, to no stereotypes, you do. <laughs> let's be brutally honest with you. I think the vast majority of people realise what stuff is there, what it's there for. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Will, will you grab a handful and throw them in your handbag? I suspect not. Yeah, I, I suspect mean, not. Have a bit more faith, have a bit more confidence in your. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and your and your customers. Yeah, and your clientele, absolutely. Well, okay then. Um, I kind of think we're coming to, to the close of it. I know that you're going to be doing a um, a um, a, a Twitter takeover Take for us, mm -hmm. and, uh, where and you're going to be speaking to Alan. So I'm yeah. kind of really looking forward to that. I think it'd be it'd be great. I I, I feel that. Uh, I mean, this is this has been fascinating. It's actually been wonderful. I've been following can I just can I just say one last point, Keith, before you go? Of course, you can. Yeah. The roundup. It uh, it was while I was doing this research earlier, and I read an article, and it got to the bottom of it and said, actually, our our mission statements at Transport and Food Banks is close, close us, down. us down. Close us down. I've never seen that before from any. Even, even even charitable initiative, which, which comes out and said, please close us down, remove the need for us to have to do that. And I think that statement in itself, we've said it publicly and to the press, that in itself, it's transparent. Everything's about transparency now. Everyone wants to see the books and what's going on behind the scenes. That is, is as a mission statement to have that right up front with the banner, and the van and the food thin thing is to say, close us down, remove the need for us. That takes away all ego, all personal profit, all, all, all factionism, factionalism, removed. Straight away, this is a socialist with a small s enterprise. We are here to help people who need help. I think that is inspirational. And I also think it's magnificent as a statement for your organisation. I really did need to mention that before we, we, we close it up. Okay, thanks for that, Dave. I, 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 I kind of agree with you. I think, you know, I think that's, um, it kind of sums up what Dave and, um, uh, and, and, and his comrades are doing there. Um, again, I think this has been a fantastic, fantastic podcast. It's been wonderful talking to you. Never you got, you got any, anything you want to close it with? Well, I think, look, there's, <clears throat> there's definitions of heroes and legends. And I think Dave meets all of them criteria, don't you? Yeah. I because I think what, it, what he's done has been unbelievable. And he's done it for the right reasons, for the right people. And I think that is truly something that everybody should admire. And, and he is an inspirational fella. Yes, and he does, you know, I mean, he, he does try and deflect everything off him. But without people like Dave, this country's in the shit. So the more people like Dave we get, the better it is. So right. thanks, Dave. You've been absolutely magnificent, mate. Yeah, I really appreciate your kind words. Now I'm getting quite emotional. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, no, I am genuinely there. I, I, I think the greatest gift anybody can can have is the respect of people you respect. And I'd pass it straight back at yourself because I appreciate everything. And I think... Um, since we started, never I know you've always had our faith and always been supportive of what we've done. I really appreciate that. 
well, it's because you're doing the right thing. And that's what everybody tries to do in their life. Yeah. Sometimes it's really, really difficult because complications get in your way, but you've stuck at it. And what I do like, you haven't stuck to the same stuff. You, you're evolving all the time and try to make it better and easier and think about people's feelings. Whereas really, people like you should be running the fucking country and Boris Johnson should be fucking handing out. <laughs> But that's just a personal opinion, man. <laughs> in, in fact, all of us in here. <laughs> yeah, well, look, at the end of the day, we, we should be, like I said to you before, the people who care run the country. And people like they run the country. No matter what people make decisions at the top, there's always people that will see the challenge and meet it and surpass everybody's expectations. And that's not something really hard to do when you're, when you get home from work and you're knackered and you go, oh, I can't be asked doing this, but you, you, you've got the drive to be able to do it. And it's, it's 24 hours a day. He doesn't get a holiday. He doesn't get time off. His brain's always working on that. And that, that, that is something that we can all switch off from our jobs. He don't switch off, I don't think. So he's 24 hours a day, 365 days a, a year. And that, is, and that is quite remarkable, I think. I think the remarkable thing is if you removed it mm-hmm. right now in this climate, what would it be like? We are talking now, it's hard enough already. That's a dystopia. He just gave numbers before 70,000 kids or 70,000 families. He's given numbers where you're getting up to a fifth of this city, maybe even a quarter. I haven't checked the demographic figures lately, but you're getting up to numbers, significant numbers. So if that was just that one initiative was removed, you start seeing the whole house of cards tumbling down. And that's where people who do it for the love, that's what we want to say to you before you leave here tonight, Dave Kelly, is the reason we got you on is we all know you individually, full disclosure, we're all Evertonians and we kind of know each other. I don't know you well. I knew you through Tony Kelly. I was a good friend of Tony Kelly and he thought highly of you. And if you don't mind me saying so, Tony Kelly didn't think that highly about many people. You had to earn it to be in his esteem. I'm t- he was a legend of a fella a- as an Evertonian, as a-, as a socialist and as a man. But he rated you. And we, as doing this podcast, we got to- we're all friends and we got together for a reason. We didn't do it for profits. We're not doing it for likes or numbers or followers on social media. We do it, be- like I said to you before about Melanie with the, with the period, Issue, um, episode and she's also done a menopause one yeah. it's for issues and, and causes we feel to be important to us as a group and well it, yours is and, and you're very impressive but it, I, I think the thing is uh, Dave it's, um, I, I, I will indulge uh, um, I, I think fan support and food banks um, is is a thing of beauty that we've created. I agree. And, and, and it, it's not just um, what we do uh, with regards to alleviating poverty and fighting food insecurity. Uh, and, uh, something we haven't touched on, and it's probably a major part of what we've, we've been doing over the last couple of years. And there's a number of things, and you'll be shocked when I tell you about the sort of things that we have done. During the pandemic, we got approached by and ne- never asked about uh, Unison. We got approached by a couple of Unison and GNB members uh, who worked for Northwest Ambulance, who told us a horror story. And the horror story was that they had less than 48 hours worth of PPE. And within 40 hours, they were going to be unable to give CPR to anyone who had a heart attack because they didn't have the kit. We rose to the challenge. We produced 150,000 items of BPA from face masks and visors, which were getting used, and it breaks my heart, to get used in hospitals in this city. Yeah. We, we Listen, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have you back on. We've just, be, yeah. had, we've just made a universe, unilateral decision via keep on and myself, via tech. We're going to get you back to talk about some other stuff, but we're running out of time, so we're going to have to cut it short now. Uh, Dave, what... Did it say to Dave, you or Keith? 
Well, it, it, it's time to get the text. Come on. We, we've said, got, we, we've, we've, we've got, got a secret. Going on. It is like, we've got secret nice. hand signals. So it, this has so been 90 all minutes. It is, there's loads we can talk about, but what Keith said to you before about the takeover, if there's anything what we've covered or haven't covered in this issue, in just this episode, just, just, just go on, I'm listening. So when, when we get to the takeover, just you say them. <laughs> Have you left the building? He's left the building. Is he is a, dead. No, I am. Keep the talk instead of me. No, I'm saying to you. Once we get to the to the takeover, you're going to have two hours on Neville, at least two hours on Neville's page with all his followers and a big microphone. So write a list of all the things you want to mention and get them going. And you, you've already got the supporters by by the numbers what you've said. But that's the time to use it. But we'll get you back because maybe Melanie and Simon. And Jamie, they might all, and Alan, they might want to have some stuff to talk to you about as well. Okay, this is going to be 90 minutes of Neville Salvo. I'd like to thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you very much, Dave Kelly. A fantastic thing. And obviously, to Neville, uh, you've been uh, well, absolutely wonderful as usual. Um, so thank you, everybody. Can I, can I just read this out here? Because obviously, I didn't want to do it while you.